A heart attack patient has just rolled into a UC San Diego emergency room, but operations have gone awry. It looks like V-fib. Hello, sir? You there? Okay, let's jump on the I'll chest. Some help in here, please. Okay. His heart has stopped. Get down there. And Dr. Okay. Raul Nene is instructing his colleagues to administer a shock. Charge is ready. Okay. Clear? Clear? Clear. Go ahead, shock him. Okay. And shock. Oh. Perfect. Okay. This patient Closer. is fine because, well, he's a talking so dummy. Nene yeah. okay. is a real doctor, but right now he's just okay. acting because this isn't an emergency room. It's a simulation at UC San Diego Simulation Training Center. These doctors and actors are simulating a ransomware attack. A hacker has infected the computer system with a virus and is demanding payment to remove it. A patient's health hangs in the balance, and people downstairs are watching in an auditorium. We imagined what would happen if you were in a hospital and you needed to take care of someone who had a heart attack or someone who had a stroke, but you couldn't access the very technologies that you rely on on a regular basis. This scene is part of the CyberMed conference. Jeff Tully, who's both a doctor and a hacker, is one of the organizers. He says he hopes to make the real impacts of a potential cyber event more understandable for medical and government leaders. This is something that we found is very much visceral and very uh, tangible and lets people who were previously sort of removed from the bedside understand that this could have those types of implications in the real world. And Tully isn't the only hacker who's trying to show just how easy it can be to get into a medical system. Marie Mo is a Norwegian cybersecurity researcher. And eight years ago, she woke up on the floor because she had suddenly passed out. It turned out that it was my heart that had taken a break. Mo's heart wasn't getting enough oxygen, so she needed a pacemaker to keep her heart beating at the right rate. Very quickly, though, her cybersecurity senses kicked in. Can my heart be connected to the internet and uh, <laughs> uh, I wanted to know uh, how is this implemented? Is it secure? And it turns out her pacemaker was connected to the internet. So Mo asked her graduate students to investigate. She was surprised how easy it was to buy a number of used pacemakers online and take them apart. Mo also bought a pacemaker programmer for just $500 off of eBay. Yeah, the same programmer that uh, is used in hospitals to, to change the settings of my pacemaker. Now, the problem isn't just that individual medical devices can be hacked, it's that entire hospital systems are vulnerable. In fact, in 2017, at least 16 hospitals in the United Kingdom and left many of those computers frozen because of a major ransomware attack. That's why these cybersecurity experts are trying to raise awareness. But Mo says cybersecurity in hospitals and for the technologies inside them can still seem theoretical. Industry data shows hospitals spend just around 5% of their IT budgets on cybersecurity. So Mo has been sharing her research in hopes to highlight the problem. This willingness among cyber experts like Mo and Tully to raise awareness on hospital vulnerabilities is something the Federal Drug Administration has noticed. Suzanne Schwartz is with the FDA's Office of Strategic Partnerships. FDA very much believes in the idea of bringing the community together. Collaboration has been really a cornerstone of our efforts. The FDA is responsible for clearing and approving consumer medical devices. Over the last five years, it's partnered up with hackers and cybersecurity researchers. The FDA organized a so-called We Heart Hackers Challenge this year, where, Short said, manufacturers volunteered over 40 devices to be hacked. It created a sense of safe space for the manufacturers who otherwise may be reluctant to participate in something like this, and the researchers with a government presence as well. At the 2019 DEF CON hacking conference in August, hackers attacked real medical devices at a pretend hospital. Schwartz said manufacturers essentially got a free consultation on their device vulnerabilities. Plenty of um, uh, hospital representatives, patients as well, um, who really got a lot out of seeing the interactions that were happening within this device hacking lab. The FDA also shares lessons learned with the Department of Homeland Security. Schwartz says ensuring patient safety requires collaboration, not just among regulators, but also with experts who can show where those vulnerabilities may lie. Shalina Chatlani, KPBS News.